Thank you.
the scripture says, Now set your heart and soul to seek the Lord. When we fall in love, we want to spend time with the object of our affection and willingly give our attention to the relationship. And falling in love with Jesus should be no different. But often believers hurry through Bible reading and prayer. The result is a superficial faith kept alive by habit rather than worship. So to attain lasting intimacy with Jesus, we must approach God with a sense of purpose and determination. Let us just put ourselves and pour out our hearts to the Lord. Just enjoy His presence. Let us embrace His love. Hold the line. 
changes our lives. We worship you for who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because
Good morning to all of us and to those who have come for the first time. I'd like to welcome all of you and that I pray that your joining with us will be a time of fellowship with each other and that we will all bring glory and honor to our Lord. The true test of gratitude or thankfulness is not during the time of plenty or prosperity, but during times of adversity and want. That is why the writer of Habakkuk, Habakkuk is a prophet of God who started this book with so many complaints. And the Lord answered. And then he has another complaint again. And God answered. And then he has another complaint again. And in the third chapter in his prayer, the last part of his prayer, this is what he said. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones, and my legs tremble. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on to the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes in the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet, verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my Savior. As someone has said that it is those times that we go without that convenience in life that gives us the capacity to fully appreciate what we have. The joy and excitement of eating or having food is greatly enhanced when you are hungry, when you miss a meal. Imagine the joy and the gratefulness of a person for a moment that we are healthy, that we are strong. And after fully recovering from a very dangerous challenge of sickness, even from, from this long bout of COVID-19, and you get out from that, and you overcome. We met our friends. You know, when everything is going well, it is hard to count the blessings. And then you say, it's all because of me. You know, in the Bible, the angels were created in a very perfect environment, receiving blessing, blessings after another from God. They do not know suffering. They do not know pain or death, but instead of being grateful, a third of the angels, according to the scripture, became resentful and ungrateful, or they rebelled against God. Isaiah speak of that in Isaiah 14, and even in the last book in Revelation, John mention of it. And you know, reading that scriptures, we can see the same pattern repeated in humanity, in our own situation, in our own environment. History shows that a generation that is born of prosperity usually become ungrateful generation with entitlement issues. Look at some families, children who are born into a wealthy family 
Many of their children become ungrateful. That is the same pattern from the heavenly realms as well. Indeed, appreciation, Thanksgiving Day celebration comes at times difficult for us. It is because of so many conveniences that we have. But if we are deprived of something, then we knelt down and ask the Lord and thank Him for the many blessings that has given to all of us. I am convinced that it is through adversity that the capacity for the joy and thankfulness is built upon on those kind of foundation, especially that we belong to our Lord and our Lord desires of it and expects us to do so. To be thankful in everything or being grateful people in all times. That's why the Apostle Paul said, in all circumstances, in all situations, in fact, this is the key to overcoming crisis or problems of life. Having a thankful or grateful heart, give, uh, giving thanks even at a time of grief. Beyond all the traditions that we have done in the past in this church for so many years that every time we have Thanksgiving Sunday, this church is always filled with people. Last year, we have almost 35 roasted pigs, litsons, just all over the place. And plenty of people and many of you have shown also the Presentation from different groups. When in fact, Ninang Milka said, we are the second owner, second, got, second prize on this contest. And the Y, of course, got the first. We were all excited with that. And we thank God for it. Today, in this auditorium, no Litson except pictures in your cell phones probably. But even then, we can be thankful to the Lord. I know that every one of us has been going through what is said a season or a time that there is nothing to be thankful for. Or there is not so much to be thankful for. The school classrooms are closed. Churches like this, limited in number. Every time we come together, there are health protocols and safety protocols. And our number is limited. We are glad that we can do live stream and they're listening to us. And we thank God for it. Business are closing. People are losing jobs. People are getting sick. Last night, I got a text from one of the close friends of the family, and many of you have known that. In only as a text, Tai Niako sa Surigao Doctor's Hospital, being positive of COVID-19. My son is also with me. But I am thankful that I have a God who is with me in the room. With so much happening in the world around us, with so many people have died for various reasons, especially on COVID-19, sorrow, pain, mourning, deep sadness, especially for those who lost a loved one. You know, dear friends, I will take nothing away from grief we feel today. Personally, I would not say that everything is okay with me. Because it is not. Yesterday, I went to San Francisco to visit a friend whose wife died with liver cirrhosis. 
When I came back from Butuan, there was a birthday celebration and we enjoyed. In the afternoon at 2 o'clock, I had a wedding. It was a joyous occasion. In the evening, there was an invitation for Thanksgiving. And I said, I will not go anymore. Mourning grief at times, I feel that it is trying to overtake me. But I am trying to overcome by God's grace. We hurt. I am hurt with the death of my wife. And I believe it will be a long time hurt. As someone said, pain will never go away, but it gets better every day by God's sustaining grace. Many of you have texted me in the several in the past several days. How are you doing, Pastor? I tell you, I am not okay. Because if I say okay, that will not be me. I am going through difficulty. But I'm telling you that it is getting better each day by God's grace. Our grief is a dark valley in our journey that we need to trudge every moment of the day. I believe God made each one of us to feel the pain of grief. I say that to the bereaved husband and the family, two children who, are, who is a medical doctor and one is a lawyer. And the lawyer said to me, Pastor, Lisod go dining walay mama. But his mama was still in the coffin. But could not respond anymore. God made us so that we will feel the pain or the grief. He made us so that we can have relationship with him and with one another that we will be encouraged to move on in our faith with him. When that relationship is lost, we feel the pain. We pay the price of relationships, but we courageously will go on with that relationship because they are worthwhile. So those of us who are in pain today because we lost a loved one, and those of you listening to me on the online as well, Losing a loved one, I say to all of us, goodbyes takes a while. Every time that we have a chance with Dre and Drew, we go to visit the grave of Ruth in these last few days. Every time we go home, Dre will always say, Bye, Mama. And I would say the same. Goodbyes takes time to heal, I believe. So we must grieve long, those of us who are grieving, and grieve deeply. Some of you have texted me that you miss Ruth. Your group will, may, will not be the same again. Maybe for a while. But when that pain, when that goodbye is completed, then relationship will be restored once again. We do not treat our grief like a stranger, that it will just go away. Many people deny it. But we don't. We must face it. We must accept the reality. Let us grieve honestly. And let us grieve lovingly. Grieve patiently. 
until the cup is emptied that God can fill in and we will be restored on that relationship. I believe when the Apostle Paul was writing to the Philippians brethren, when he said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Every thought, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let me be honest with you, my friends. Reading, teaching the Word of God, and preaching the Scripture can be relatively easy. It is the application of the Scripture that is difficult and hard. Throughout my ministry and the pastoral ministry, I believe hundreds of people, I had the opportunity of burying them from newborn to old age. But I have never felt such kind of a pain. Until I saw Ruth inside the coffin and buried in Uriah. I always smile when I mention Uriah because Drew, the younger brother of Dre, every time we ask him, where is your mama? He will always say that, our mama is in heaven in you, Uriah. <laughs> in heaven. And stopping by in the terminal in Uriah. When Paul wrote this scripture, he has in mind, how can we pray with thanksgiving when you are grieving? How can we have thanksgiving celebration when our heart is grieving? But we can have. We can celebrate thanksgiving in the midst of grief. In the midst of mourning, in the midst of crying, in the midst of losing loved one. Why? Number one, we thank God for memories. We thank God for memories. I believe one of the greatest gifts ever given to us by God is our memory. All of us have precious memories as well as those things that we do not want to remember of. Memory is an amazing thing. It allows us to recall events that occurred moments or even years ago. It allows us to remember the people that we have met before. And people who have passed from this life to eternity. Memory allows us to remember the love, the blessing, the joy, the excitement, and wonder. Memory is an amazing gift given by the Lord for each one of us. If we do not have that memory today, dili tang malipay, magtanaw sa usagusa. Because we will look at each other very strange. So as I was thinking, how can I be grateful and thankful to the Lord in the midst of this grieving, grieving heart? I said to my family, when we have our Thanksgiving time, we must thank God for the memory that we have. Death is powerful. But yet, it cannot destroy the memory we have that with our loved ones. We will always remember God in our lives. That's why as you enter the sanctuary, the theme that you are following throughout the month, 
From the first Sunday to the fifth Sunday today, our theme is remembering God's goodness in our life. How can we thank God in the midst of grief? We thank God for the memories that we have. Secondly, we can thank God and we can be thankful for relationships that we have. Not just for the memory, but for the relationships that we have in our home, in our church. In the Bible, there are two institutions that has been given by God to us. It is the family and it is the church. And all of these institutions are founded in that family, in that relationships. I appreciate the prayer of Pastor Onilo mentioning about the family, the relationship, his prayer about the father, the mother, the husband, the wife, and everyone in the home. We must be grateful and thankful to that. Do not wait that someone will die and say something good. Yesterday in the wedding ceremony, one of the Ninang said to this young couple, he said, she said to them, there is only a few lines that I'd like you to remember. All we say, these three magic words in your married life, I love you. As I said, that is very important for you. But you know, as the years pass by, husband and wife, they forget. I love you. But I believe it is very important. We thank God for memory. We thank God for relationships. Very important in our family. Husbands. Remember the girl you met at the altar. It may be many years ago, or maybe just a few years ago. She is the one who bore a child from you, who stood faithfully to you. Be thankful to your wife. In our circle in the family during our Thanksgiving on Thursday, we were all asked by Leah to say just one word or two words. Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? Many of us will say that this girl said, I am thankful for my husband. That's good. The other one said, I am thankful for my job. Dre said, I thank God for the life of mama. Always going back to his grandmother. You know, Kenny Rogers' song, and I believe Charlie knows this. Buy me rose, buy me a rose, call me from work, open the door for me, what would it hurt you? But as the days go by for us, and wife, they forget bringing a rose. Ang ilang dado na lang isda. Call me from work. <laughs> they do not call anymore. <laughs> In riding a tricycle, they forget that the girl will go first. Ah, una una na lang sa mga lasang ah. Paningkamot lang imo daday. Husbands, are we thankful for a spouse? Now, to wives. Remember the man you fell in love with. Be thankful that he's with you now. You can still be thankful because you have some problems with him. We can just say, Lord, thank you for my husband. Today he's so good. Next week, I do not know. <laughs> you can still be grateful. Now to children. Be thankful for one, for the mother who bore you. 
I know there are children who are here. Maybe you are a grown up, but you have a mother and father who are still living. And they are just a call away and a text away from you now. In our times, we send telegrams. In other times, we just saw every few months or every year or once in a blue moon. But now, no more like that. If they are distant from us and they are still living, and if you are here in the auditorium today or listening to me in the live streaming, if you, have, if you are a child, if you are a son and daughter, and your parents are still living, text them, thank them for what they have done to you. If you can, give them gifts. Not just on December on their birthdays, but every day of the year. Now to parents, be thankful for the children that God has blessed you. I know there are children who are also who are burdened with, pero sige lang, we can still be grateful and thankful to them. They may not be in the plan that we have for them. They may be walking in the ways that we do not like. But I encourage you, you can still be thankful for them. Not thank you that you are part of my family. In the midst of the challenge today, I'd like you to encourage, I would like to encourage parents today, our children are just a text away. They cannot be with us, but we can Facebook them or send messenger to them. Easy and communication can showing our relationships to them. Now to siblings, be thankful for the times that you spend together. Yesterday as I was driving by in San Francisco, where I grew up as a young man, I remember the times with my brothers there and sister. So I called them. Ni ako sa San Franz. Ako nakita ng atong location sa personage nga nahirig na and we have great time together. It is just wonderful time. Now to the widows and to the widowers, you thought that I forgot you. I have some message for you as well. Remember the deceased spouse with pleasant memories and thankful heart. It will not be easy. For me, it is not easy these days. But I always say, thank you, Mama, for your life you have given, you have shown to us. Your faith in the Lord and your reading in the Bible daily. And you know that Bible now is just laid on the corner. And this morning as I saw it, I said, thank you, Lord, for, your, for the life of Ruth. You have shown to us. We are here today. It is because of relationships. I know Dr. Serbian is here because of his relationship with Pastor Ronilo and some other friends that they have been here. And you are here today because you are invited by some friends, and that is relationships. You are here today because you have been with your you are with your husband, you're with your spouse, with your children. Daughters, maybe our young children are not with us. Relationships are very important. In the midst of this grief that I am going through, I'm sharing with you that we can still really thank God for the memories, relationship we have with each other. Not only in the family, but the church family that we have. Isn't it great? that we belong to this big family. Bob Cranston would always sing in this pulpit years before. He would say, I'm glad I'm a part of the family of God. We sing that. 
And every time we sing, when I was still a student of the Bible College, there is always an encouragement that I am not, I am not just belonging to that family of two one in San Francisco, in the Church of San Francisco, but there is a whole big family all over the world, and that is the family of God. Isn't it wonderful that we are not living alone? We are here today. It's all because of God's grace. Relationships matters. Relationship brings us together. And we want to thank God for that kind of relationship. I am thankful that God has given me the privilege of serving this church this year. I am thankful for the family and the friends that supported me, that supported the family in times of our grief. I am thankful that there is a church that ministers to me. I am thankful that there is a congregation like you ministering to me. Your smile, your text, your messages have encouraged all of us. I am thankful for the promise of God that he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And I am thankful that there is a way out. Yes, the body will be buried, but the spirit belongs to God. When we, as our Lord and personal Savior of our lives, I am thankful for the precious memories that God has given to me. Every day, now, I count the blessing of God. To count our blessings is to appreciate them one by one, as the song says. And genuine thanks, praise to God goes beyond openly and burning our souls. Before listening, ears of the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Today, it is our Thanksgiving Day celebration. And you may ask, how can I? Celebrate Thanksgiving in all of this what is happening. COVID-19, maybe broken family ties, losing jobs or whatever it is. But you know, this hymn that is written by the hymn writer talks about that kind of blessing. It is not just a hymn, but it is a message in itself. Before we will sing this hymn, I would like us to read together the words so that we can familiarize and we can try to meditate and reflect it in our own lives. What will happen if we count the blessings that God has given to us. In the midst of what is happening all around us, yet we can still count the blessing. Let us read together this verse. Okay, say please. When upon life's you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings. Every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, 
see what God has done. When you look at others, whether lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy, your reward in heaven, nor your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Amen and amen. Now you say, how do we give thanks? By singing, as someone has said. Psychologists have discovered that singing praise actually lifts our spirits. There are physical changes that take place in our lives. If you cannot sing, read. If you cannot read, wiggle or whistle. Singing. How can we give thanks? Not just by singing, but by serving as well. We sing with our lips, but we serve with our lives. The Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness. Everything we have is a gift from God. So let us thank God for Him. Not only by singing, not only by serving that we can be thankful and grateful to God, but also by giving, honoring Him, signifying that we acknowledge that everything we have does not belong to us, but it belongs to Him. Every year we have Thanksgiving offering and we put it on a box as our demonstration of what God has given to us. Someone has said, how can I be thankful? How do you know that I am grateful? I tell them, there is a feeling in the heart. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for this and that. There is a feeling in the heart and there is that expression of words that is being uttered, but also we can express our gratitude to God and honor to God by giving to Him what God has blessed us. In our bulletin, there is an envelope, Thanksgiving offering. I'd like you to get that, for we will be receiving that envelope towards us. Maybe God has blessed you with good health, with family, salvation, and whatever. It is just good to return to God what has blessed us. Give as the Lord has impressed upon your heart and saying, Lord, thank you for my mom, for my family, for good health, for the promotion that you have given to me. The other day, my heart was encouraged. My brother texted me that, Noi, gipromote lagi ko bisan pag COVID na time. Mao ba? Asa naman ka na sign ron? Niya lagi ko sa takluban. Gihimo kong assistant director sa niya, regional office from division manager to that being assistant director is a long job. And he told me, Noe, I must be grateful and thankful to the Lord 
Others lost the job. But God has been so good to me. If there is healing, there is a box for healing. In whatever we have today, let us give God the glory of having that thankful heart in the midst of the challenge, memory, relationship with each other, the salvation that we have with the Lord. We say thank you, Lord, and we count that blessing. So that we can maintain our social distancing, I will just call our birth month, and then we stand up and then go and give our offering, our thanksgiving offering. Our tithes and offerings are in the box outside, I mean by the door, but this is a special offering that we will receive. And I believe that as we give God, honor Him with our thanksgiving offering. Give the amount what God has impressed upon your heart. As, they will, as we will sing, count your blessings, name them one by one. May I call those who are born in January to please stand up and come and put your... Count your blessings in the Okay, February then. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Okay, March. If you do not have the envelope, you can just bring it one out. by one. Okay, April. Count your blessings, come. see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Okay, May. When upon life's pillows you are tempestos When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, name them one by one And it will surprise you so God has found Count your blessings, name them okay, one John. by one Count your blessings, Count your see what God has done Count your blessings, name them one by one Count your July. Many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every thought will fly. And you never sing in the place go by. Count your blessings, name me one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. October. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the crossing heavy November. all to bear? Count your many blessings if we doubt will fly. And you keep on singing as the days go by. December, then the last Count month. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our great God. That even in the midst of difficulties, yet you are our Lord who save us. And we thank you, Father God, that through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we can overcome every challenges that we come before us. We thank you for people who are here today. We pray, Lord, that what we have done brings glory and honor in your name. 
All of this I pray in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining with us today and we hope to see you again uh, next Sunday and God bless us all.